Hello there. Hello. How are you? Good, man. How are you? I'm great. It's uh, fantastic to see you. Nice to see you, man. Ollie Sykes, Bring Me the Horizon. Uh, I just saw you in Los Angeles. I saw you oh, uh, the uh, the second night that you played there. Sick. And uh, it was a great show. And sure. uh, here, wait, actually, hold on a second. Let me show you. You were uh, you were right in front of me because I was right at the uh, front of the thing. I don't know if you can see that awesome guy right there. Yeah, oh, yeah, there he is. There he is, a handsome man you are. There, <laughs> look at you. <laughs> uh, good to see you. Great to talk to you. Um, I was supposed to talk to you during the pandemic, but ended up talking to Jordan, and that was when uh, Amo came out, I believe it was. Oh yeah. And uh, and he was talking to me about um, uh, producing that last album. And you've got a brand new album coming out September 15. This is Post Human uh, Next Gen. And I'm wondering if you guys produce that again. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've, we've had some help with our friend Zach Savina. Um, but yeah, we're, I mean, we're still working on it, to be fair. But yeah, um, it's we've kind of took that role again. Do you find it a, a bigger challenge to... Uh, to have to play both roles or is it uh, is it easier for you to do that um, going okay here's the here's what I want and you deliver that right away yeah I mean I think it was harder before to be honest when you had someone else come from outside doing it that maybe didn't understand your vision perfectly or whatever um, and that's ultimately why we decided to start trying to do it ourselves because we weren't happy with when we were working with other people um and jordan obviously has the technical know-how and i mean i kind of realized that to some extent i've been producing the albums since the beginning anyway because you know i would sit there in my head before a producer was someone that like physically you know twisted the dials and the pushed the knobs and everything but a producer's you know more about the getting the best out of a song and structuring it and, you know, arranging it and giving it what it needs to be and stuff. And that's what we, that's what I've done like since the beginning anyway. So it didn't really feel like much had changed. No. Did uh, you haven't produced anybody else's work? Have you? Um, no, not yet. Not successfully. I don't think so. Uh, apart from, my, apart from my wife's music. But is that something you would consider? Do you think you you could become, you know, that sort of uh, take on that role later on in your career? Do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I think once you know, I would have more time. Definitely, I I think I'm good at it. Um, so, and I I do enjoy it as well. Um, well, that's the the key part. If you don't enjoy it, why are you doing it, right? <laughs> you're not kidding, mate. So you know. I. I know you guys are you're getting close. Speaking of enjoying it, you guys are getting close to that twenty-year mark uh, mm -hmm. for the band. And obviously, still, uh, you know, plugging away. So I'm assuming still enjoying it. Uh, what do you like better, uh, the in studio stuff or the live stuff? Um, they both have the pros and cons. They're both <laughs> challenging. Like we're, you know, we've been on tour for six weeks. Um. Right now, we're just about to finish the tour, the tour here in America. And obviously, we fucking love it, and the shows are amazing. But, you know, we miss our family. We miss our wives. We miss our pets. We, You know, it gets tiring. It gets hard. It gets monotonous. Um, and, yeah, it, it, so it's, it's amazing, but it's difficult. And it's the same with writing. You know what I mean? It's like writing can be so depressing like because sometimes you know you can go for weeks and you're like we haven't got anything or i'm not feeling this and you must get to a point where you're like maybe all the music in the world's already been written and there's nothing else to do or you may you start doubting yourself and you just genuinely hate it you're just like i hate making music and then mm -hmm. you have a breakthrough and you, you you find that riff or you find that melody or you you know you find something fresh and you and you, and you can't stop listening to the demo and you just like this is why I do it because it's because it because once you once you get that feeling and like when when music makes you feel that way it's just like it's 
the best high in the world. It's the same with the shows as well. When you play an amazing show or you hit the note just right or whatever, it's just there's no feeling quite like it. So it's it's very similar in terms of in terms of it. Do you know what I mean? So I wouldn't say I prefer I you know one over the other. You know, I I just talked about seeing you uh, just a few weeks ago in Los Angeles, and uh, you were supporting another band. Uh, the previous times I've seen you, I've seen you. Well, this makes three times now. Uh, you were headlining, and your shows are very. You got a lot of production to them. You got a big, uh, obviously fan base that comes out. Were you finding it uh, a little challenging to play for somebody else's audience, or did you find a lot of your audience there? Um, I think we kind of feel like it's important and enjoy making sure that we do still play shows where we're not just like, we've already won the crowd over, the crowd are there for us. It's like, we still feel like there's a lot of people that don't know about our band and it's good. It's good. Um, it's good to go out and play a show where you're not relying on all this production and pyro and all that stuff. It's just your band, your music to a bunch of people that have never heard you before. And it's like, all right, can, can we convince these people that we're a band worth listening to? Um, so that's, we, we enjoy that challenge and it's, and, and you do get a, a big sense of, um, achievement. You know, if you, if you come off that stage and you, and everyone's cheering and everyone's listening to you and everyone's doing what you say and, you know, you, you can feel it, you can feel it end at the show where it's like, fuck, we won that crowd over big time. And we definitely, you know, we definitely been going out there on these Fallout Boy shows and you can visibly see, especially we open with a very heavy song. You can see on some people's faces like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> <laughs> and then by the end, you've got them all jumping out the seats and all that. And that's 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 a really cool thing. And I think very important, very also very important to, to you know, to make sure that to keep reminding yourself, you know, we've got a long way to go. Do you know what I mean? Like. There's, there's a lot more people that can know about our band and there's a lot we're not the biggest band in the world and like we don't need to be the center of attention either sometimes it's good just to be that kind of band that warms up the the main act well i gotta say it was a tighter set list and every song it was like a banger every song so i i mean that was on the plus side of things you know if, if you got anything uh you know positive about that playing yeah, in yeah. that role but uh you know i was standing next to a girl who was a huge fan. She had a sign. You came, that photo that I took was when you came and stood on the subwoofers in front of me and you were reading her sign after the show. Uh, if you remember this, uh, you know, everybody was off stage. You came out and gave her a hug. Um, she was, you know, she was a big fan since whatever she said on her sign. And I thought that was super, super cool of you. And I saw the after effects after you had already gone and you could tell how um, how much that meant to her, and uh, you know, and as a fan, a longtime fan, how that's going to carry through, you know, uh, you know, a moment she's going to always remember. So I thought that was really cool, really special. Um, your engagement with fans seems to be very you. You get out there and you touch people. There's a song where you get out into the crowd and you go around and you know, you're, you're doing your thing. Do, do you ever find a, a challenge doing that as far as like getting out in the middle of everybody? Um, I mean, it's, it, it was something that I don't usually do, but felt because it weren't our show. Like I could, I would, I could do it without it becoming a problem where I think if we did it at one of our shows, it might get a little dangerous. Mm -hmm. uh, and yeah. And like you say, I'm, it's, I mean, that's what it's all about for us. It's like our fans are like, like we wouldn't be anywhere without them, as cliche as that sounds. But so you, it's it's amazing. And like yeah, there's some days where like, you know, there's been a couple of days on this tour where I've been really low and not feeling good. And it's like, I'm like, I don't have the confidence or courage to get out there and do it, but I make sure I do it anyway. And then it's like, you know, you go and see those people that are singing every word or have a sign or a tattoo or whatever and you know or you see like a kid that's like six years old that's got a bring me t-shirt on he's doing the horns at you and you're like this is crazy there's just like millions of people all around this planet that are listening to our band and all sh shapes and sizes and creeds and colors and ages and everything it's just um and that just you can't help but like that that can yeah. you know, cure any kind of depression so it's, it's i uh 
I know that your fans are very vocal as well, especially on social media. And I'm sure you see a lot of stuff that people uh, write or what they say and this type of stuff. Is it uh, tough for you to see sometimes some of the people? Because there, there, there are two, I think, two fans. There's the fans that will always follow and they're like, we really want to take this journey and see where you're going. We love it. We want to follow you. We're we're into it. And then there's the other ones that are like, well, they're not like this anymore. They're not like this. Or, you know, what how do you take that stuff in? Um, I think I've managed over the over like recent years to like soften my approach to what those, you know, it's very easy for them people to piss you off. And you're just like, fuck off. Like we are this but at the end of the day, they just love your band and they love something you did meant so much to them that they just want you to do it again. Um, and you just got to realize that that just, even though it might annoy you, it comes from a place of love. Do you know what I mean? And, and rather than fighting back, you just got to appreciate that and appreciate the fact that, and sometimes maybe even take like, go makes you question yourself as well. It's like, cause to a certain degree, there's not, we can't be the band that we used to be. We wouldn't know how to do it and we wouldn't know how to do it with any genuine, you know, with any authenticity or integrity, because we just, we just, we, we grow and we, we age and we, we, we mature and like our taste change and, you know, the same like the way you, your taste buds change, it just does. And, you know, there's nothing you can do about that. But, but sometimes those people can remind you like, wait, like, are we losing what makes us special? And like, it makes you ask yourself and that's what i've asked myself over the years it's like are some people that are like sad because we're not as heavy anymore or whatever do they have a point do we need to like look at it and go like you know how are we are we losing there's not many bands like bring horizon anymore that are like in the kind of mainstream yeah. stuff so like and sometimes you almost like want to come not conform but like sometimes you know like our band you know, 10 years ago, there would have never been a dream in my thought that anyone would have ever said, that band are going to headline festivals one day, or that could be the biggest rock band in the world. And then all of a sudden, that those kind of ideas started formulating and people saying them, and that can go to your head. And then you can start going, oh, maybe we can. And it's like, sometimes uh, you get so preoccupied with whether, whether you could, that you don't stop to think whether you should. And I definitely feel like, I've listened to some of the fans over the years. I'm like, you know what? They're right. Like, we shouldn't water our shit down. We shouldn't, like, because we're, like, one of the last bands that still do heavy music, right? So, you know, so, like, all that stuff just keeps you in line. And you've just got to realise it all comes from a place of love and don't let it piss you off. And at the same time, just do what, stay true to yourself. Like, we can't write music for fans. It's impossible. Um, but we can... We can, you know, we can let what they say resonate with us and not just automatically like knee jerk reaction of like, fuck you, we'll do what we want, you know? Yeah, that's a great approach. That's that's a good one and a, a very solid answer to that. I've heard some kind of wishy washy answers to that sort of question before. Uh, quickly, you did a, a couple of collabs not long ago, one with uh, Russian band Ice Peak and uh, Baby Metal. How did, how did those come about? Um, I think just both from like mutual respect of each other's bands and I'm really into Ice Peak and Baby Metal and um, yeah, we just like kind of, every time we saw Baby Metal at a festival, we'd always say hello and, you know, um, we always became friends. So I just think they're sick as well. You know, same with Ice Peak and for me, it's like in like line of what I've been saying about stuff is like, I, I want our band to be enjoyed by everyone and stuff and for me, that means like bridging out to like different genres and kind of like and like mixing it up and trying to like find new ways, like new kinds of styles of music by um, collaborating with different people. So I think for me, it's a nice way to like like to get to express myself in ways that maybe um wouldn't make sense for the band to do. I think at one point with in our career, like especially like album like ammo is like is when i wanted to do so much so many kinds of styles of music because i like so much kind of music and then after realized uh, maybe not that you have to stick to your lane but 
like you can't you can't do and be everything you know what i mean you've got to do what makes you special so for me getting to collaborate with other artists like that is like my way of getting to do that other stuff that maybe doesn't make as much sense for our band to do i get it yeah do you do you find that more pressure then in that in that regard if you're trying to do a little something a little bit different or do you find it's actually more of a relief that you can just kind of just let loose in a different way yeah it's a relief it's just like getting to just be creative and not worry about like what your fans are going to think about it because they don't have to listen to it, you know? Right. Yeah. Makes sense. So uh, again, Ollie Sykes, bring me the horizon, new album, post human next gen coming out September 15. Uh, any kind of differences in the actual way you recorded the album, you know, in a post pandemic age, people are doing different things. Uh, did you guys have any thing you approach differently? Um, I mean, we'll just, we we make music anywhere and everywhere now. It can be on a bus, can be on a hotel. Like, I'm the we'll record vocals anywhere, and they'll be the ones you hear on the record. Like, I don't think we've actually set foot in a studio in about three years, four years. So, it's definitely a lot more just rough and ready. But like, we're pretty good at like polishing the turd. So, it's um. <laughs> Yeah, they, um, we'll do it anywhere, and it's it's. Uh, I think studios and mics and all that stuff's a bit overrated. You know, what I mean, you can make anything sound good these days. So, well, that's true. People are doing albums in closets these days. So, yeah, as, uh, long as, as long as the emotions there, like drown, we the the chorus of drown is was recorded on an iMic in the back of a bus. Wow. I think, and we tried to re-record it, and we just couldn't get just couldn't get the same takes motion wise so even my singing teacher who was there she was like just keep the originals <laughs> so it's, <laughs> it's really it means shit you know it's just well, so, it's so all about that emotion mm -hmm. yeah awesome i uh i know you got to go we're running a little long here uh but quickly uh the album's coming out in september you've got a tour in i think in europe you're doing some stuff and then is there uh without divulging any kind of dates or anything plans for next year later in the year sometime in the middle of the year for uh america um probably if i'm remember i feel I, maybe the end of next year we might come back okay yeah. that would be fantastic by the way uh quick question uh the phoenix show which was uh, our show here in Arizona, uh, you had to uh, pull out of that. What uh, what was behind that? Uh, our drummer, sadly, um, lost a family member, so he had to leave. Oh, no. That, um, that day. So, um, yeah, obviously the shock of it meant we couldn't yeah. have performed anyway, but we had to get a drummer to learn all the songs. And, I mean, he miraculously learned them for the next day. But yeah, it was a it was a bit unexpected. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, nothing we can do. And so we um, we apologize to all the the fans there. And but we'll make it up to you. Oh, we know you will. Uh, very cool of you to spend some time with me today, Ollie. I hope to uh, see you guys soon, and uh, uh, much success with the new album again, September fifteen. Post Human Next Gen coming out. Looking forward to it. Thanks, man. Cool, man. Anytime. All right. Thanks. Have a good one. In a bit.